Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Game Feed. My name, of course, is Panto6, or you can call me Derek. But today, we're talking about E3 again. And you're probably wondering why I'm talking about it again, considering I've already done two videos with speculations about two weeks ago. Well, E3 is just around the corner. And to be exact, it's this Sunday. It's when it kicks off with the first couple conferences, I believe, by Bethesda and EA. But today, I'm not talking about the conferences. I'm talking about the games that I'm looking forward to to the most. Some that may get announced, some I already know has been announced, and we've seen before, and some honorable mentions. So this will be a fairly short video, maybe about 10, 15 minutes long, but I just want to talk about just a few of the games I want to see. There's going to be 10 of them and 5 honorable mentions. For starting out with number 1, the first game I'm going to talk about and mention is Dead Rising 4. Now, Dead Rising 3 was an Xbox exclusive, and it sold pretty well, and it actually came out on Steam and uh, PC as well. Um, I'm really excited for Dead Rising 4 because I've seen some leaked images and from what they're describing it might be a remake of the first game but more open world so a return to the uh, shopping mall and maybe I don't know the surrounding areas and I'm really excited for it because I love Dead Rising as a series. Uh, number two was meh to me but I really like number three and number one and uh, the other offshoots but I did like those quite a bit, and I hope that the game comes out and is actually really, really good. I'm really excited to see that one. The second game I want to talk about is Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn is a new IP for uh, PlayStation as a whole, and it's made by the awesome guys over at the Guerrilla Studios. Um, if you're not familiar with them, they worked famously on the Killzone franchise, which has been a hit or miss, but it's always been a technical showcase for those systems. And Horizon Zero Dawn seems to be going the same route. Um, but this time it has a really awesome, refreshing setting. Um, it's a, supposed to be like an open world, uh, kind of a, like a survival taking place in the far, far future where you're hunting down uh, giant mech dinosaurs, and it does look beautiful. It looks cool. The uh, the gameplay re looked really, really great uh, last time we've seen it. So I would expect us seeing that this year again, hopefully with a release date and some more uh, information about the story and more gameplay as a whole. The third game on the list is something I'm super excited for. It's not higher on my list just because I don't know much about it yet. But as you guys know, I'm a big fan of Halo. And last year we got teased um, but Creative Assembly is working on Halo Wars 2. Now I really, really love the first Halo game, well Halo Wars game. Um, and it was actually a really good console RTS. I loved it. everything about it. Uh, the campaign was great, the story was great, the controls were just spot on, especially for RTS. And giving um, Creative Assembly's pedigree, I'm hoping that this game just turns out ultra awesome. and. I hope there's like cross-play of PC and the Xbox, and I know that's going to happen because that's Microsoft's big initiative, so hopefully we see more gameplay on that, maybe a beta, and something about the story, so Halo Wars 2 for sure on the third entry. Now the next game I'm both nervous about, but get kind of excited for because... Uh, it's a series that I really, really enjoy, and um, yes, it's had some problems in the last few years, but I'm excited to see, hopefully, a much better version of the game that I love, and that's Resident Evil. They're supposed to be announcing Resident Evil 7, which we know it's in works right now, but we don't know what it's supposed to be like, and Capcom has, Capcom has stated that they want to go back to the survival horror roots and try to... Uh, bring back the spirit of the original games, which I'm hoping they do. And, you know, I would put Resident Evil 2 on the list, but Resident Evil 2 Remake may not be shown quite a bit yet since, you know, it was just announced. So we don't know much about that game outside of that is coming. But Resident Evil 7, hopefully it fixes the problems of the last few games, and uh, it's a whole lot better and just scary and, you know, just awesome. So let's go ahead and just pray on that one. Be good, please. <sighs> now, the next game I'm really excited about is a game that's been in development hell for years. It was originally supposed to come out on the PlayStation 3, and we thought this game was never going to come out. Um, it's a spiritual sequel to um, Shadow of the Colossus and I believe Ico. I'm not sure how true that is, but it does take place in the same universe. And that's The Last Guardian. Uh, we finally got to see gameplay of, and 
confirmed. Sony confirmed it, but this game is coming out on the PlayStation 4. I hope it comes out this year. I hope it does not get delayed again because I can't handle it anymore. Even though I don't have a PlayStation 4 right now, but when that game comes out, you can guarantee I will be picking another one up. But I'm still waiting for PlayStation Neo to come out, so right now there's no games for me to play except for the Uncharted 4. But I can wait. I can totally wait on that. But Last Guardian is something I really, really, really want to come out soon because everything about that game is going to make me cry. And that dog's going to die. You know it. And it's just going to, they're going to yank our hearts out. And, uh, and they're just going to watch us bleed. But we're going to love every single moment of it. But Last Guardian for sure. Now, this is where things get really, really interesting because I love Battlefield. I love all the Battlefield games except for Hardline. I kind of like that game. It's okay, but it's something it, I just wasn't interested in. But whenever they shown the trailer for Battlefield 1, I was fucking blown away. I love World War I. I love World War II, Vietnam. And I've been so sick and tired of these, like, you know, modern-day shooters and the sci-fi shooters and... I, like, seeing Battlefield 1 was a breath of fresh air. Um, I mean, a lot of people say that, you know, what is there to do, Battlefield, like, in World War One? But that's the same thing that the EA execs said whenever they first turned it down. But the game looks amazing, and I can't wait to get a hold of it. And the trench warfare, the, the, the riding on horses, the Red Baron plane chases, all that shit. Oh, my God, I can't wait to play it. And... You know, I'll be upgrading my PC specifically for this title, and oh my god, I just can't wait. And, I mean, everybody seems to think the same thing, because it's probably one of the most liked YouTube, video game YouTube trailers of all time, and it's basically blown away with Call of Duty's um, Infinite Warfare trailer, that's for sure, but oh my god, it looks so good, and I cannot wait to get my hands on this game. The next game is something I hope gets announced. This is something I'm totally speculating, but I hope it gets announced because I just finished Doom, and I really love the Wolfenstein New Order game that came out just a couple of years ago. And these, both of those shooters were some of the best shooters this generation. And there's just this game series that hasn't been on the market for a long time, and Bethesda has a right to this. And they have... A team that's capable of pulling it off. And that is Quake. Now, I don't care if they just do a sequel to Quake 4 or just do a complete reboot of the series. But I would love to see them do it because, you know, this team, machine I think it's Machine Games, um, they took care of Wolfenstein and Doom. And Doom was, like, I just finished this game and I loved every minute of it. And I wanted more. And I'll probably go back and play it again just to find out all the secrets and everything like that. But, you know, I want there to be another Quake game. And I think they can pull it off. And they can pull off the multiplayer just fine. As long as they don't try to modernize it. And just, all they have to do is just grab the template from Quake 3. And there you go. That's multiplayer. Just refresh everything. But if they could do Quake, that would be amazing. And I hope Bethesda announces that. That would be amazing and i you know you guys might not agree with me and you guys might not know much about quake but you know as an older gamer that was a series i really really enjoyed next game on the list is something i'm really excited about just because it's something i have played so many hours of in the last generation i played this both of the games originally on the xbox 360 and i spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours just playing these games and you're only reason I bought the first one is because it had beta access to Halo 3. You probably already know what I'm talking about, so I'll go ahead and get to it. It's Crackdown. So they're supposed to be either rebooting or making a direct sequel to the first Crackdown, Crackdown 2. But it's so crazy because like they're using the cloud to do physics-based uh, rendering of destruction. And I don't know how many players are supposed to be in this, uh, like the multiplayer itself, but... I've never seen destruction in a game quite like this. And, like, it, this looks nuts. It looks nuts. And, you know, I just can't wait to hop in the world and start collecting all the agility orbs and stuff like that, swimming up my hero and just destroying everything. Now, I heard that you won't be able to do this within the actual offline mode, but once you're online, you connect to the cloud, and 
all the crazy shit happens. But Crackdown is something I hope to see at Microsoft's press conference. Maybe more gameplay, a solid release date, maybe a beta or something. I want this game. I want it now. And I need it. I need it in my life. I need it right now. Like heroin. Well, I don't really need heroin, but, you know. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. But Crackdown was fucking awesome. If you get a chance, if it comes out in backwards compatibility, which I bet you anything, but both Crackdown 1 and 2 will be uh, a pre-order bonus. If you buy the game, pre-order, you get those two as backwards compatible titles. I guarantee that's going to happen. Mark my words. Mark my words. It's going to happen. Second to last on the list before we get to our honorable mentions and our final pick, is Gears of War 4. Now, I played the beta for 4, and, you know, it, it was actually really good. It was really good. I really enjoyed the series since the first game came out. Um, I remember when the first game came out. Um, I think I was, um, I think it was E3 or something. Um, I was watching the trailer for this, and it was playing Mad World. And I bet you I watched that trailer like a thousand times. Because, you know, I, I, was, in, I was in college at the time, and... You know, my friends would come in and they'll see me on the computer and say, are you watching that trailer again? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm watching it again. And, you know, I played the series, um, you know, one, two, three, and Judgment, and I really, really like this series. Um, yeah, the story's not that great, but it's really good for the most part. It's, it's fun. Um, you don't have to think too much about it, but the gameplay is super, super solid, as well as the multiplayer. And, you know, it's something, you know, I share with my friends, uh, we played Horde Mode, we did the co-op story campaigns, and just to see that they're continuing the story, um, what takes place after 3, it's actually pretty promising. It's, um, you know, the graphics are great, they're using Unreal Engine 4, you got Rob Ferguson, um, he's taken director's chair this time, uh, with a brand new studio, and he promises this is going to be well taken care of, and from what I played of the beta, you know, I actually believe the guy, and it does look great, uh, so... Gears of War 4 is my second to last pick, so let's go ahead and get down to the honorable mentions. So the honorable mentions are something that um, I'm not going to list them. I'm not going to show any pictures of them, but I'm just going to tell you the games that I think are going to come out and get announced, but they may not. So Watch Dogs 2 is one of them. Um, the first one was meh. It had some pretty cool, um, you know, Pretty cool things you could do in it, but the story was terrible. The character was fuck awful, but the only thing it had going for it was some of the gameplay. But the downgrade and the graphics and what Ubisoft shown us was just pitiful. It was a really bad thing they shown us, and it didn't live up to its potential. So I'm hoping Watch Dogs 2 um, does a whole lot better. Now, this is something they may not or may show, and that's Halo 6. They may show a teaser trailer at the end, uh, but I don't see them showing any gameplay. But Microsoft, um, they just got done with Halo 5. It shipped last, uh, it just came out last year, and it did really good. The story was, it, it needed some work, but it was actually pretty decent. Um, and the gameplay was the best fa Halo has felt in forever. And the multiplayer is still really great. But Halo 6, I'm hoping Halo 6... They announce this game maybe at the end of the conference, and Microsoft's really good at doing this. They're like, hey, one more thing. Here's this. And I think Halo 6 might be the one more thing. Um, now, the next game is, I doubt they'll show any gameplay of this. They might show trailers. Resident Evil 2 Remake. Um, as you guys know, they got the green light from Capcom, the team that worked on Resident Evil uh, the HD remaster of the first game and Zero, they are already they have the okay to do Resident Evil 2. Now I'm both really scared about this, but I'm also excited because they said it's going to be it's they're not going to fuck around with it and make it actiony. So I'm hoping you know this game just maybe show a trailer or some kind of teaser or something, maybe a clip of gameplay that would be great too. Uh, another one is State of Decay 2. Uh, now, you're probably seeing a little theme here. I love zombies. I love zombie video games, and I love zombie movies. And, you know, I like State of Decay when it came out. Yeah, it had some, had some 
glitchiness and it didn't work perfectly but it was fun it was really really fun um and i still catch myself playing it today it's not a bad game at all and if you guys get a chance check it out you can get it on steam uh xbox uh you know i don't think you, you can't get it on playstation it's a xbox exclusive and pc but that's good now ubisoft has one more thing they could show and I kind of hope they do this. I kind of want to see them reboot the Splinter Cell series. Um, now, Blacklist was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I, But it was touted as a sequel of sorts. And I kind of want them to reboot it. Go back to, you know, old style Sam Fisher. Bring back Michael Irons. Um, and just make it simple. It doesn't have to be this big, big, giant thing. But, you know... Ubisoft will be Ubisoft, and Ubisoft is crazy. You know, it'll probably be end up a some kind of open world Splinter Cell game. But those are my honorable mentions and Gears of War four. So that's what I want to talk about. So let's go ahead and get ready to move to our next one. All right, guys, this is the last game on the list, and this is something I'm surprised I even listed because this isn't really for me. This is for my fiance, um, and that's the Legend of Zelda for the Wii U. Now, <laughs> you know, I played Zelda. The only two or three that I played that I thoroughly enjoyed was Link to the Past, Link Between Worlds, and The Wind Waker. And I picked up The Wind Waker HD, and I just recently got um, Twilight Princess HD for her birthday. And she loves the Zelda series. She's played pretty much all of them. And whenever she's seen the trailer for the Wii U version of it's like the big open world uh the trailer and everything. It looked amazing. And I, you know, I even liked it. And, you know, <laughs> I, the Zelda series hasn't really done much for me, but I'm excited for her. And when I see that she's happy for something, you know, that makes me excited. So Legend of Zelda definitely goes number one on this list. And, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you really enjoyed this list. I'm trying something a little bit different in the way I'm editing and Hopefully you guys like this format. Uh, there is a new Let's Play of uh, Adrift. I started Adrift recently. It's a new, it's not really new. It came out last year, but it's a uh, game on PC where you're in space and you're, everything's screwed up and broke and it's kind of like gravity. But guys, if you like this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Help this channel grow as well as if there's anything you want to be done differently, just let me know in the comments as well. So, again, be sure to hit like and subscribe, and I love you.